so you've seen there now that we can increase the performance dramatically to take us a lot closer to a true DSP. Now in the next section here we're going to look at how we can take us a step closer to the real-time processing uh, product arena. So if we go back to our block diagram again of the core, uh, we're now going to look at the top half of the block diagram, which is the tightly coupled memories. So if we zoom in on the, um, the diagram here, we have our 64-bit bus architecture again, linking our tightly coupled memory unit, which is part of the ARM core, uh, to our external memories that we have available on the bus. We have the main flash array, as we have in the F429. This is connected through the ART accelerator to provide you with the zero weight state feed directly into the core. The only difference compared to the F4 is we've changed the butts width from 32 to 64 bit there. So we're now feeding the core with the 64 bit uh, instructions so we can handle the dual issue features of the device. Also on this tightly coupled memory bus, we have two RAM modules. We have instruction RAM, which is 16K bytes. Uh, this will provide you with a guaranteed zero weight state uh, access to any routines that you load into that particular section of RAM for your instruction bus. And then we have 64K bytes of the total SRAM content of the device sat as data tightly coupled memory. So this you can where you can put your stack, your heap, or anything if you're doing DSP calculations or the coefficients can sit in this RAM. So again, you're guaranteed zero weight state access to the variables that are sat in that RAM. We also have a dedicated module in the TCM memory unit so that the DMAs on the high-speed bus can access any data you're generating and loading into that particular block of SRAM. So as I said, this is part of your 320K bytes of SRAM that makes up the whole device. To make the best use of the memory, the DMAs would need access to any um, arrays that you're creating or data you're calculating to send out to other peripherals uh, within the system. So, so we have access to this particular area of RAM from other DMAs through the high-speed bus. So the types of code that you would normally store in these memory blocks. So for the instruction area, it would be things like interrupt service routines, where you want them to react as fast as possible. Critical code for motor control, for example, where any weight states could have a serious um, effect on the operation of the motor. Or anything where you just need highly deterministic um, computation of a routine. So that pretty much covers most types of code area that you'd want to store in the ITCM. For the DTCM, stack and heap are two of the very um, biggest benefits to make sure that your variables that you're pushing and popping off the stack are on the uh, fastest access time. Any other frequently used data, so if you've got um, an array that's permanently been updated, you might want to store that in that area. And anything where you want a really high speed uh, effect from a DSP calculation, so all the coefficients you'd store in there. I think one or two of you put hands up for DSPs. Is there any other types of memory or chunks of code that you would say would fit into one of these categories? Or do you think we've pretty much covered it there of what you would want to put in guaranteed zero weight state memory? So I think with the DSP people, I think, yeah, just really the coefficients, isn't it? There's nothing else that you'd want to store that has to be zero weight state. I think critical code for motors is probably one of the other important ones. Anyone else doing anything in their softwares where they 
would always need zero wait stay access. Any other parts of code where you have to have that.